Hey, welcome back to Rays. I'm Joe Budrow, CCA and agronomist here at Spectrum Non-GMO. Appreciate you being on here with us today. And so what I'd like to talk to you about today as we're getting to a very critical stage in the corn plants development, and that's at pollination time. So maybe you're looking at your fields, maybe there was delays this spring, maybe we didn't get corn planted in your area quite as soon, so maybe you're not quite there to the pollination event in your corn field. So let's talk about some things coming up that could impact your yield, impact your profit on, on your farm. So first thing I want to look at, and especially in some of the areas where we've seen extreme flooding, is nutrient deficiency out there in the cornfield because the corn plant at, at this stage as we're moving towards pollination of tasseling BT and, and almost there is that that plant is uptaking a lot of moisture but it's also uptaking a lot of nutrients so if you've had some flooded conditions here lately let's be mindful of where our nitrogen levels are out there in the field okay and so that that's critical that, that can be the the sign of a, a successful corn crop coming in for you this fall. The second thing I want you to start maybe looking for or being aware of is that especially when the silks start coming out, there are insects out here that really likes that corn pollen and they will do anything to get to that corn pollen including clipping those silks on, on the corn plant. Now fortunately from biological aspect of the corn plant it will continue to elongate that silk within that ear until it reaches pollen. The problem is, is if we get massive populations of northern corn rootworm, western corn rootworm beetles, Japanese beetles clipping on the silk, we're not gonna get successful pollination out there. So um, as you're out there scouting, as you're out there looking at your fields, be looking for some of the, the impacts of what the insect population is doing there specifically in your field. So the other thing we want to look at is we're getting closer to the pollination time frame, of course, is you know, making sure that our corn plant is getting enough moisture. I understand that we can't always control those situations in dry land situations, but if you happen to be in the western corn belt where irrigation is plentiful, yeah, we want to make sure we're getting enough water on that corn. Two things can happen. We can lower the, the temperature of the cornfield with the cool air coming onto it a little bit. And also, we can also basically regenerate some of the moisture that, that we've lost in, in that situation. So be, be mindful of what's going on there. Fungicides, application of fungicides. And let's talk about that just for a second here because we've got good commodity markets right now don't think that that market's going anywhere for a while so we have more profit potential so if you've not used a fungicide this may be the year to maybe do some experimentation with applying a fungicide we want to do that before the silks get brown so if you're looking at corn about to this stage once those tassels come out once we're getting some silks on that's a great time to, to be applying a fungicide it's been proven that fungicide will reduce the temperature within the canopy of the corn plant um, by three to four degrees. So that can, again, that 90 degree mark when we start losing pollen, that can make a difference on what the result you see from a pollination standpoint. So if you need any more details on any of this, don't hesitate to give your Spectrum non-GMO consultant retailer a call and we're with you as we raise this crop.